Alrighty hacksters, here's a really cool board that I've been kind of ogling for a while and I haven't ever really found a justification for it. So I decided to just bite the bullet and then see when it comes in handy because that always happens. So okay, here we have the Adafruit Cricut Playground. You can find it at adafruit.it slash 3093. Boom! This is designed for use with the Adafruit Circuit Playground Express, which is another really cool little board actually. This little guy can be powered off of a LiPo, has a ton of little sensors like this MEMS microphone and a little buzzer and a couple of buttons, kind of like the micro bit and a 10 LED RGB LED ring, accelerometer built in, ambient light detector, plus I think it even has, yeah, it has transmitting and receiving infrared signals and a temperature sensor, but the infrared means that you can use them to talk to each other. It's really intense. It's a ton of cool stuff packed in one board and I think it's a great one for people to start learning on. So that makes the cricket a great step up from there. A great way for young people to start learning about robots as well. So you've got four little servo connectors. Um, what is this? Eight little signal IO connections. You've got four capacitive touch pins to start off with, a NeoPixel connector, a speaker connector, connections for motors, motor one, motor two, and ground. You've got, is that for a stepper motor? I think it is. I'm really excited to actually have that. Yeah, and then a barrel jack connector, cricket reset, on off switch. Oh, I love on off switches. Yes. There's a little happy light and a collagen light. And I'm not sure what the deal is with those, but uh, it's nice because most of these have little icons that show you visually what they do, as well as the words that tell you. It's got all this stuff on it because these are standoffs to mount the Circuit Playground Express on top of the Cricut so that you can easily have these little electronic connections as well as structural support. These are labeled ground, SEL, SDA, NeoPixels, speaker, and V out inside the little outline for the Circuit Playground Express. That's where it gets mounted. What happens if I just plug this into a barrel jack without it? Okay, we get a little power. Oh, it's got a little happy face. I guess that's just like powers on and things are working. Cool. That's a five volt connector. So I've been looking at this on the website uh, Adafruit Cricut for Circuit Playground Express. It's only 30 bucks for a robotics platform. That's pretty sweet. If you already have the Playground Express, which is $24.95. If you don't, it's still under $50 for a whole robot brain. So the cool thing about this is you can program it using CircuitPython, which is the Adafruit version of MicroPython, friendly for Python people, friendly for leveling up from CircuitPython. It's basically Python squished down so that it fits on a microcontroller. Uh, MakeCode is a drag and drop editing interface similar to Scratch or Blockly. And Arduino is, well, we all know and love Arduino. C++ code. Again, you're gonna literally bolt your Circuit Playground Express onto the Cricut board using the standoff bolts. And yeah, so for analog or digital servo control, bi-directional brush DC motor control. Again, that uh, one unipolar stepper motor connection, or it could also be for high current Darlington 500 milliamp drive outputs with kickback diode protection. That's really nice. That means that like, if you stop sending power to the motor and it keeps going in some way, it's not gonna send power back into your circuit and mess with your electronics. Uh, for solenoids, relays, or large LEDs, as well as it could also do one stepper. Four capacitive touch sensors, eight signal pins, whether that be digital IO or analog inputs. So you could read an incoming voltage, for example, a NeoPixel driver, with a five volt level shifter, that's really nice. You get automatic five volts for your NeoPixels. Yeah, that's really nice actually. And then one class D four to eight ohm speaker, three watt max audio amplifier. It's really nice. They have a whole Cricut category with plenty of compatible motors, servos, solenoids, speakers, etc. Wow, look at this whole wonderland. I didn't even notice this existed before. It looks like you can get versions that, for example, have an ESP8266 or 32 on it. Nice. Not only that, but there's a whole section of the Adafruit learning system developed to the Cricut board. So you can make a little turtle bot, you can make a micro bit Cricut robot. Awesome. A little dancing marionette. <laughs> Look at this little robot creature with magnets. This one looks like it has a feather format board on it. That might be a blue fruit for Bluetooth control. Oh, look at this flippy robot. Look at this Lego Cricut rover. That's so cool. There's already a few Cricut related projects on Hackster. I can't wait to see more of them. Maybe the next one will be mine. Who knows? For now, I'm going to try and assemble this. It looks like the USB connector aligns with the barrel jack. And probably what I do is just like this, put a screw through, attach a standoff. I can't resist like putting it together right now, come on. 
And it really seems perfect for a little turtle style bot. Kids first robot. It seems kind of beefy, you know? Like it would stand up to a lot of abuse. Yes. It's kind of stylish too, huh? This octagon shape, look at it. The only other octagonal board that I can remember seeing was Naomi Wu's Sinobit, which is a bright red board made by Elecro, and it was the first open source hardware certified PCB to come out of China. I kind of wish that the uh, labels were more visible from the outside once you put these on. Here we go. Yes. That lines up really nicely. Cool. I think I might have tightened those down a little bit too much, actually. There's a little bit of alignment that still needs to happen. See how that still slides around a little bit? Yeah, we'll get that perfect. And then we'll tighten everything down. You could also, I mean, given this format, look, you could still screw some wires in between there which uh, I really like as a method of connecting wires to stuff. It depends on what type of hookup wire you're using, you know? If you're using solid core hookup wire, then it can be a really nice way to create temporary connections. Although, you know, I would definitely go with actually Adafruit's silicone coated wire because this stuff is really flexible and really durable. I think it would do the job if you tinned it. I would definitely make a little hook shape out of the end of the wire and then tin it. But then if you're going with solid core, it should be easier to form those hooks, but also it would maybe be more risk of breakage. Look at this, solid little piece of equipment. All right, I cannot wait to build something with this, but it's gonna have to wait for after the break. I'm recording this in the office before leaving on holiday. And I hope that if you are also out in the world traveling, you're having an awesome time and staying safe and being happy. 